Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. Got here a Mazda to look at. It's got a DPF problem. Okay, so customers just arrived here. It's a bag of parts that has been changed. Looks like a DPF pressure sensor and a couple of other sensors in there. Map sensor and a exhaust pressure sensor by the looks of it. Get the engine cover off. Okay, so I'm looking at this here. At the minute. not being fitted back correctly someone's had that off uh, this sensor has been changed over here and this sensor here has been changed okay so problem is this flashing light here DPF and it's done 119,000 miles so these cars I do know they are very bad for blocking up the intake manifold um, so we're gonna get the diagnostic machine here set up Okay, this is the Launch UK Euro Tab 3. Set up a diagnostic. A diagnostic scan. Okay, we'll run a high speed scan. Particle filter regeneration frequency. ABS system. Right, let's go back to this one. Particle filter regeneration frequency. Uh, doesn't sound like a good sign. Usually that sort of code means that you've got either a damaged DPF or ash buildup uh, that usually can't be cleaned. And let's go to data stream. Look for differential pressure. Let's see what else we have. Distance since last regeneration. Okay, so found all of the live data that I can, anything that I can uh, look at here. So distance since last regeneration is only 40 kilometers ago. Um, customer said it done three regens on the way down here. Uh, he's driven from a few hours away, so that's not a good sign. Like I said, now the car it has regen three times on the way down here. And we've still got high DPF pressure, 17, jumping around from 12 to 17 millibars at idle. We should only see a couple of millibars down there. Uh, exhaust pressure sensor, that seems to be reading. Even though it's uh, going red on here, so possibly maybe too high. Manifold pressure, that's reading. So I can see that these two are sometimes slightly off. So there and as we're holding it we've got 1400 desired but the pressure is a thousand. So maybe a blockage in the map sensor. Okay so I've got another little bit of an issue here. I can see which we've got five millibars of pressure while the engine is off. So might be an issue there with a the sensor as well. Let's go in and see if we can try calibrate that sensor first. Uh, we've only got regeneration in there. Uh, initialization, let's see what's in here. EGR, ETB, turbocharger, no. Data reset. Is that just for the particle filter? I'm just hoping that we can go in here and there'll be a sub menu for the sensor itself. Doesn't look like it is. Let's just reset the DPF. Okay, so using a digital manometer, it's connected up to the DPF holes here. So the skinny holes over here, we've got 1.4. And this hole here, we have 9.5-ish. .5 
I think the first thing I'm going to do is take off this cheap sensor and put back the original sensor on. Um, I don't know if this is working or not, but I've got a feeling it probably is, and it's probably going to work better than the uh, cheap one that they've put on. Okay, so just put that on with a single bolt for a minute. We'll uh, do a test on that now. Okay, just going to load back up the uh, data stream again. And there we go, we have a zero reading with the engine off. And with the engine on, we're getting a pretty similar reading there, sort of eight, six to eight millibars of reading. It's a bit fluctuating, but some of these cars do do that. So we're already a lot better there. 3000 RPM, we have 170 to 180 millibars of pressure. You can see now that after a few revs the DPF has warmed up a little bit, the pressure has increased. Coming up to around 20 millibars of pressure. And again we can confirm that with the manometer here, we have 21 millibars of pressure at the DPF. Once once the DPF gets warm, uh, it is common for them to get, give a higher reading. And it is a sign again that there's either ash or damage to the DPF itself. Of course when stuff gets hot it can contract so that's what will give you the higher reading okay now i'm going to try and put some cleaner through this and see what happens um i'm not 100 percent sure it's going to work because i do believe this is ash build up or damage to the dpf but the customer wants me to try and clean it and the dpf sits a little bit high on these so i'm going to be very careful about how much fluid we're putting in while the engine's off Okay, I got this kit from Launch UK, DPF cleaning gun, DPF cleaning fluid. We're gonna get this sprayed in and see what happens. All right, so I'm just gonna do this with the engine running. We're just gonna hold the trigger down now on this. It's connected to the compressor at 130 PSI. We're just gonna hold a constant spray on this, get it filled into the DPF. Again, I'm going in through that tube on the left, which is the bigger diameter tube and the tube that's got the higher pressure on it. Better get a glove on. The metal on this is sticking to my hand, it's minus two degrees Celsius. Freezing. We'll get all of this sprayed in and then we'll get back. Okay, now that all of that fluid's gone in there, just let that rest there for a minute. Let any of the damp come out, any of the fluid that's left in the tube before we reconnect it back to the sensor here. Okay, we've got a little bit of foam in there coming out of the exhaust. Okay, so we're just holding the RPMs up now. See where the pressure is going to come down to. We'd like to see that coming down around 50, if we could. It's dropped down fast, and now it's sort of slowing down a little bit. get a lot of smoke like that steam that is just steam it's not smoke okay so we've stopped there at about 90 millibars and we are at it's hard to say there given accurate reading but somewhere between four to nine millibars at idle so we're still up around 100 millibars there which is no good so I'm just going to use that to hold the revs on it for a minute Okay, so I was doing some research, and apparently this stuff, acetic acid, can it can disintegrate ash. Um, so let's try it. Okay, so I've mixed it up with some water, and we'll get that put into the car. Right, let's try that again. Oh, it's blown off. Okay, we'll get that on a little bit tighter and try it this time again. Okay, we'll try that again. Just gave it a couple of revs there, that's why we got a spike as we first started. Okay, so that doesn't seem to have worked there. Now, I do realise that with the engine running, it's not going to have a lot of time to um, soak in. But like I said, the DPF is quite high in this, so you do risk hydro locking the engine by filling it with the engine off. 
Okay, so after a few minutes more of Holland revs and just going in to do some research, I've noticed that the pressure has come down to 50 millibars. That's at 3000 RPM. And if we let the car idle down, we have two or three millibars of pressure. So it looks like that has been a success. So what I've done there, just off camera, was gone to special functions and of course doing an initialization of the DPF to reset that. And then I've also used the center display here. Let's go back using the wrong, wrong button there. So if we go to applications and maintenance and just reset the oil as well. Once you reset the DPF on these, if you don't reset the oil, it might not regenerate properly. And then of course, we press clear the DTCs and start the engine back up and we have no longer any flashing. Now if you've got a car that's been regenerating too often you've more than likely got an oil level that is too high so we're going to check that and I can see there it is a fair bit above the maximum level so we're going to try and out some of the oil. Ideally you just want to change your oil, give, the, give it an oil service but We'll chat with the customer, we'll either drain some of this oil out or give it a, a complete oil change. So I'm going to use an extraction pump here and get some of that oil taken out. At least get it to the right level for now and then we can chat to the customer about if he wants to have an oil change done while he's here. So the reason for the oil level being high is when you do way too many forced regens or regens while it's driving, some of that fuel is going to get into the, into the sump, it gets down past the cylinders. and if you do that enough times, of course, it's going to raise the oil level. Okay, so we removed a couple of litres of oil, so we're now sort of halfway between full and minimum. That's where you want it. Okay, so that is one Mazda, I think it's a Mazda 3, all finished, and we'll see you on our next video.